A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Melchizedek, king of Salem and priest of God Most High, met Abraham as he returned from his defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham apportioned to him a tenth of everything. His name first means righteous king, and he was also king of Salem, that is, king of peace. Without father, mother, or ancestry, without beginning of days or end of life, thus made to resemble the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. It is even more obvious if another priest is raised up after the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become so not by a law expressed in a commandment concerning physical descent, but by the power of a life that cannot be destroyed. For it is testified, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The scepter of your power, the Lord will stretch forth from Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Yours is princely power in the day of your birth in holy splendor. Before the day star, like the dew, I have begotten you. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord has sworn and he will not repent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus entered the synagogue. There was a man there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus closely to see if he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. He said to the man with the withered hand, Come up here before us. Then he said to the Pharisees, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil, to save life rather than destroy it? But they remained silent. Looking around at them with anger and grieved by their hardness of heart, Jesus said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately took counsel with the Herodians against him to put him to death. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, today as our nation prepares for Inauguration Day, uh, it's fitting that we are reflecting on Melchizedek and the role of Jesus Christ in relation to this priestly ministry of Melchizedek. 
Because Hebrews unpacks for us that Melchizedek, reflecting on the reading from Genesis, where we get this brief few verses on Melchizedek, is a man with no origin, no beginning, no end. He was a king, the king of Salem, the king of peace. Abraham offered him tithes, brought him bread and wine, images of the Eucharist. And Jesus is a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. And it reminds us of many things. Not only the unique priesthood of Jesus, but Jesus is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the one that has all authority. And regardless of where anyone is on the political spectrum, As Christians, we know that Jesus is king. He has the authority. All things are being ordered according to God's plan. Nothing happens apart from his knowledge. And we take peace in knowing that God is in control. That doesn't always mean things go as we think they should. And depending on who you talk to, various political leaders are the end of the republic on all sides of the aisle. But what we know is our hope is in Jesus Christ. He is a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. He was not of natural origin through the Levitical priesthood. But he was chosen by God the Father to be the eternal priest and to be our high king. And when you see the gospel reading today, we we shouldn't be surprised when leaders, regardless of where they come from, don't do what they're supposed to do. This is the account we have with Jesus today, right? He is healing in the synagogue. And they're mad that he's healing and they are plotting against him. As Christians, we should be people that are truly living out this gospel, not only in the acts we do of charity and service to others, but in the speech we have. It is, uh, always bothers me when people who profess to be Christians are more hostile in their speech and the way that they approach things and people, and particularly political life. Uh, we should be people who are building bridges, working for peace, and specifically the truth of the gospel. That's what we are advancing. But this is done in the manner that Jesus gave us as a model. Um, I had posted a video response after the violence at the Capitol, and it was interesting to see the people's response online. The video was just all about how are we as Christians to live, and, and there was complaints on both sides of the aisle saying that I was leading our people astray. All I did was read Scripture and say, here's how we should live according to what Scripture gives us. So today we take great comfort in knowing that Jesus is our King. That's why I chose crown him with many crowns for our opening hymn today. Uh, He is our hope. He is our confidence. He is the one in whom we trust. And within that safety and confidence, we engage in the culture in which we live, And may it always be said of the Christians in Steubenville and at least a Holy Family Church that we are working to bring people together and to build bridges as we continue to pray for Christian unity. Yes, we have differences with our our Protestant brothers and sisters, but, but we move forward by building bridges, by finding common ground, by working towards things that allow us to draw us to Jesus Christ. But it starts with us, as it does every Mass, right? We turn our attention to our shortcomings and our failings, and we offer that to the Lord. So I take great peace today. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Every day is the day the Lord has made. Let every day be a day that the people of God rejoice and be glad. Amen? Amen.